In this video, we're going to go over how to flush a drip line to prepare it for a neural IR procedure. And the principle here is very simple. We're going to work very hard to take all air or air bubbles out of this system so that we don't introduce them during our case. These drip lines are hooked up to things like femoral axis sheaths or particular types of catheters to run saline through the system to prevent clot buildup. However, when we're working in neuro IR, specifically working in the brain, we want to make sure that we do not introduce any air bubbles as they can, of course, cause stroke and even death. Even the smallest bubbles can be dangerous, so we're going to work very, very hard to make sure that there are no bubbles or air in the system. Now, this video assumes a few things. It assumes that you have a drip bag which is set up, which is just a saline bag around a pressure bag. and one thing I want to make note of is that there is typically this type of view chamber where you can see the actual drip rate. So that's going to be really helpful for us to actually see what's going on. And you want to make sure that typically as you're, um, you know, as you're starting that the, the drip chamber is about halfway full so that you can see actually your drip rate. If it's too high or too low, you're either going to suck air into the system or you're going to not be able to see what your rate is. So you want to make sure that that's taken care of. Um, additionally, you want to have a few things at your disposal, a water bowl so that you can actually flush the line into the bowl without getting everything wet. A couple four by fours um, is useful, mainly because as you're flushing this drip line, Water droplets can collect on the line itself and they can look like they are air bubbles, but in reality it's just uh, water droplets. <clears throat> so this helps us resolve if there's actually an air bubble in the system. And then you want to have uh, something like a forceps, something you can basically tap the line with, especially at connections to dislodge any bubbles. So anywhere here we can see we have an extension line uh, that was added here to our, our drip line system, anything that has an air interface, this can trap bubbles and we want to have an, a way to kind of dislodge them. So it's good to have metal utensil like some forceps um, or needle drivers rather to tap the system with. And fundamentally what we're going to do, and I'll show you this in real time, but we're going to turn on our line at a, a pretty uh, you know, quick rate so we can flush everything out. And then we're going to take our four by four, wipe down the line as we go, and always wipe up where we keep the more distal part of the catheter elevated so water can go forward. And then if there is any air, it goes, to, you know, it floats to the top and we can push it out through the line and flush all the air out of the line. So we'll start close to the um, where the, it hooks up to the saline bag, and then we'll go more distal, wiping and tapping as we go, and inspecting closely to make sure that there is no water that's left. Now, this system that we use has this roller clamp, so we can unclamp it, and as we do, we can see that we're getting an increased rate of flow through the system, and we can look and we can see here through our drip chamber that that is um, the case there as well, of course. So now we have forward flow. We can try to keep the tip in the water bowl not to get everything wet. But then here we just want to make sure there's no air bubbles. And if there is, we can tap them out. And sometimes you can really increase the rate in the very beginning to, to really flush out any air that's trapped there. But then what we want to do uh, with a good forward rate is exactly as I said, we take our 4x4 four four and we basically tap everything out like so and wipe as we go and here we can tap with our instrument just inspecting closely we can tap here as well too just make sure to tap any bubbles loose and we're inspecting the whole time, making sure there's nothing there. And then we wipe as we go. Use my thumb to kind of, as you can see, agitate 
the drip line and I'm wiping it down as I go, inspecting closely for any air. So far, so good. No air there. And then we come to the end and we're good. And now we can clamp it down. And now our whole line has been flushed. There is no air in the system and we're ready to go. So we can set this aside and move on with our other preparation. Now this will have to be done for every drip line that you're doing. I'm only gonna show you one example, but the same concept will be done every time for every line at the start of every case.